I hear people say things all the time like, I just had a gut feeling that my boyfriend was cheating on me. And he was. Something told me not to get in that car that night. Something didn't tell you. Someone did. The Holy Spirit did. But because you don't know him, you don't recognize his voice. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to 828 with Kate. I'm your host, Kate Taylor, and I have to start this episode by asking, are any of you watching The Chosen? Season 4 just launched this past weekend. My mum and I had been waiting for this new season. It's the first ever multi-season show about Jesus. And my favorite thing about it is that compared to other productions about the life of Jesus, where typically they will condense the entire gospel into a two-hour movie, the creators are really taking their time telling these stories, and it means that we get to see Jesus in the in-between moments. Not just his miraculous birth, death, resurrection, but we get to see Jesus hanging out with the disciples. We see him laughing and joking with his friends. We see him going to bed at night and dancing at weddings. It could honestly make me cry thinking about it because we see Jesus in his humanity like never before. I think we all know that Jesus is fully God, but I think sometimes we can forget that he is also fully man. John 1.14 says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He lived a life on earth for 30 something years, and for the final three of those, he was with his disciples. They got to learn from him, do ministry with him, eat meals with him, be loved by him, and have him come and stay in their homes. That's what we see in this show. And every time I watch it, I can't help but think, imagine how incredible it would be to have Jesus physically beside you. Imagine you could just turn and ask him a question, or hug him whenever you're feeling sad, or just hang out whenever you want to. But do you know that there is something better than having Jesus physically beside you? At least, that's what Jesus said. That's what he told his disciples. For three years, they had done everything with Jesus. But at a certain point, he told them he would have to leave them. Well, the disciples struggled with that. Probably in the same way, we sometimes think, Jesus, why can't you just be here with me? The disciples were upset. They did not want him to leave. I can only imagine after that amount of time of bonding with someone and growing a relationship and giving up everything to follow him, they would have been beside themselves. But Jesus says this, You are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. The disciples were not going to be forsaken or left to fend for themselves. They were not going to be left without guidance or support, and neither are we. 
God is still with us. Jesus said, I will come to you. The world just won't see me, but you will see me. We as Christians have been given spiritual eyes to perceive God's presence in us and around us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God. We know this because of the verse where it says, he will give you another advocate to help you. In Greek, there are two words that can be used to mean another. The first means another of a different kind. The second means another of the same kind. When Jesus was referring to the Holy Spirit, he used the one that means the same kind kind because he was reassuring his disciples that although their comforter, teacher, friend was leaving, another one who was exactly like him was going to take his place. Not only that, but he said this swap was for their benefit, that if they truly understood what was being offered to them, they would be glad that he was returning to heaven if it meant they received the Spirit. So I want to ask you, are you as excited about having the Holy Spirit as you would be if Jesus knocked on your front door right now? Do you see the Spirit's presence in you as an advantage to having Jesus physically beside you? If not, doesn't that show how far removed we are from the reality of what Jesus promised us? Out of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit is the most ignored, undervalued, and misunderstood. Just the other day, I saw a video of a girl on TikTok, and it was a great video, but she kept saying, the Holy Spirit is so cool, it does this, and it can do that. And if we want to talk about pronouns, the Holy Spirit uses he, him in almost every instance where he is mentioned in the Bible, not it. The Holy Spirit is a person. We have one God who manifests in three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But most Christians do not relate to the Holy Spirit as if he is a living, moving, dynamic person. And I am wondering how your relationship with God would change if you started to recognize the Holy Spirit for who he really is. I hear people say things all the time like, I just had a gut feeling that my boyfriend was cheating on me, and he was, or something told me not to take that job, or not to get in that car that night. Something didn't tell you. Someone did. The Holy Spirit did. But because you don't know him, you don't recognize his voice. So I want to help you understand who the Holy Spirit is, what his role in the Trinity is, and why you should be glad to have him residing in you rather than Jesus physically beside you. Firstly, Jesus as a man can only be in one place at one time. And where is he right now? In Acts chapter 1, the disciples watched Jesus ascend up to heaven. And Luke twenty two sixty nine 69 says, from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand. We have more confirmation of this from Stephen, who was the first martyr of the church. He was the first person to be stoned to death for preaching about Jesus. The scripture says right before he died, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So God the Father is in heaven, God the Son is in heaven, but God the Holy Spirit is on earth, right here, right now, and residing in us as believers. And his role is to be our advocate. The meaning of that word in the original language is one called to the side of another for the purpose of helping them in any way. 
So here are just five ways that the Holy Spirit helps us. Number one, he reminds us of what Jesus has said. John 14, 26, Jesus said, The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. I've talked about this before in a video, I say it all the time, you need to read your Bible because once you get that word on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit can bring it to the forefront of your mind at a time when you need it the most. By reading the word of God, you are making it easier for the Holy Spirit to communicate with you. Why? Because you are learning his language. 2 Timothy 3.16 says all scripture is God-breathed, it's God-inspired. 2 Peter 1.21, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This book was written by men who were empowered by him. These are his words. So when you read his words, now when you're anxious, the Holy Spirit can remind you. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. Now when you're feeling guilty, the Holy Spirit can remind you there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now when you're standing in front of the mirror, picking yourself apart, you will hear the Holy Spirit whisper, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Number two, he helps us to understand the Bible. Someone without the Holy Spirit could read this entire book ten times over and be none the wiser. And don't we hear this all the time? I see it in my comment section. People say things like, well, I tried reading the Bible and it just made me more confused than before I read it. It gave me more questions than it did answers. I can't even take myself seriously. It, I just think it's a load of nonsense. Well, that's because 1 Corinthians 2.14 says the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. If you're trying to read this thing without involving him, good luck. We are dependent on the Holy Spirit to understand the thoughts of God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. He's the only person who can illuminate the Bible for you. So when you sit down to do your Bible study, try saying, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge that you are here with me. Please speak to me. Please teach me. You will be amazed at what he starts revealing to you through scripture. Number three, he convicts and guides us. John 16, 8 says, And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Part of the Holy Spirit's job is to point out where we're going wrong, to guide us away from our old sinful life and help us to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. It says in Galatians 5.17, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So after you get saved, now you're going about your life and all of a sudden think, I know I shouldn't go back to that guy's house. I shouldn't hang around with those people anymore. I feel uneasy when I'm watching that TV show. What if you started to understand that feeling of conviction as the Holy Spirit's actual voice? Now you can still choose to ignore the Holy Spirit's voice, but I can tell you this, every single time I have ignored that conviction, I have lived to regret it deeply.
I have prolonged my pain. I have hurt others. I have made things more difficult for myself now and in the future. I have even made things more difficult for my future husband. However, every time I have listened to that voice, I have been so incredibly grateful and relieved that I did. You know why? Because Romans 8, 6 says, letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. At any given time, you are being led by one or the other, but you can't be led by both because they are in constant conflict. And not only does ignoring the spirit's conviction hurt us, it also hurts him. This is another reason we know that the Holy Spirit is a person, not an it, because the Bible says he has feelings. Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. What if you started to see your sin not as breaking rules, but as grieving someone? It grieves him because the Holy Spirit is God, and God loves you, he wants to protect you, so he will warn you when you're getting off track and help guide you back to the right one. Number four, he helps us when we are weak. So much so that the Bible even says the Spirit inside us prays to God the Father for us when we don't know what to say. I used to feel so scared about praying when I was a new believer, especially in public. I was so worried that I wouldn't say the right thing. But even when you are lost for words, or when you are so upset and beside yourself that all you have to offer God are your tears, the Holy Spirit translates our needs to the Father, and the Father understands. Romans 8, 26 through 27, the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words, and he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because the Spirit intercedes on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. Number five, he empowers God's people. Before Jesus left the apostles, he told them this, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Spirit gives us power to proclaim God's kingdom and tell people about Jesus. The Spirit also gives us power to obey Jesus. If you find yourself powerless to overcome a specific sin in your life, or you feel powerless to forgive someone, or you don't have the confidence to share your faith with others, are you trying to do it in your own strength? Because Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The Apostle Paul made it clear in Galatians that only if we walk in the presence of the Spirit will we find the power to resist the passions of the flesh. You will not be able to be a man of God, be a woman of God, or maintain a godly relationship by trying harder or learning more theology. You will only live a victorious life as a Christian when you learn to abide in the presence of a person the person of the Holy Spirit. If you want to know just how much the Holy Spirit is in the details of our lives, as I was wrapping up writing this message, I pulled out my Bible to look up a specific verse. And you may have noticed that throughout this message, almost every single verse I have quoted is from the New Testament. If you're watching the video version of the podcast, you will see where these ribbons are is where I was studying for this message, all the way in the New Testament. But as I opened up my Bible, 
it fell open to this random page of Judges, way in the Old Testament. I have not read the book of Judges in four years. I last read it during the pandemic, but it opened to this page and as I looked down, I saw a verse underlined and circled, which said, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. And a note that I must have wrote four years ago, which says the empowerment of the Lord allowed him to do what would have otherwise been impossible. The same spirit is within us. Some people may say that was just a coincidence, but I would say that's an example of though the world no longer sees Jesus, we can still see him all around us every day. I thank you, Lord, that you did not leave us as orphans, and it was to our advantage that you went away, and we received your spirit, the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, to be in close fellowship with us. Just as you were in close fellowship with the disciples, you are in even closer fellowship with every single believer today through your Holy Spirit. So though your body is seated in heaven next to the Father, you said we could be sure of this, that you would be with us always, even to the end of the age. Thank you all so much for watching or listening to this episode. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please leave a comment to let me know and I will talk to you all again in a couple of weeks. Until next time, God bless you guys.